Hello, my name is Jeb Belcher. I'll be presenting for LORAM Technologies, and our topic is Next Generation Imaging for Cross-Tie Inspection. For those of you all familiar with uh, the old GREX, we've merged into LTI, LORAM Technologies, and we're still heavily involved in, in wood and co concrete cross-tie inspection for, for North American railroads. So uh, one of the things we're working on right now is a, a high-resolution color scanner that can work at high speed. Um, the, the goal is 60 plus mile per hour collection speed with 4K resolution for each half of the track. Approximately a 13 foot field of view with, with full color separation. Um, it's, it's a lot of data as anybody who works with color and line scanning knows. So we've, we've created some capability to have dynamic resolution left to right across the track. So we can have less resolution, for example, uh, on the areas beyond the tie or maybe more resolution on the areas over the rails, which is a real neat feature. So we have, we have four resolu resolution zones we can dial in throughout the image. Um, and we're initially looking at concrete applications with it. Um, so I got a, a pretty zoomed in shot here. I, I can't put the whole thing on scre screen and, and demonstrate the resolution, but, but you can see here the, the color components. Um, this tie is actually pretty clean, but it, it does have some small cracks on it. Uh, we can see all the pitting. And so the, the goal is hairline crack assessment and, and obviously larger failure mechanisms of, of concrete ties. But beyond that, we'll have a full field of view of the track, a little bit beyond the tie, uh, wide enough for, for some switch inspection and, and things of that nature. Um, and a lot of what we're working on right now is, is related, related to x-ray. So those of you all familiar with our Aurora XI system, we um, do x-ray inspection for the subsurface of, of wood ties. And I'm going to talk uh, about a lot of the things we're doing there. Uh, we're doing some AI work, which is on this slide. And then we're, we have some next generation equipment, which allows us to do quite a number of things that we're very excited about for, for x-ray imaging. So this slide is a, is a surface capture, uh, just a laser scan of the surface of, of railroad track. Many of y'all are familiar with these images. Our x-ray can be overlaid with the laser image. So in the center there, you've seen the, the x-ray image come into the field of view. So that is actually what the interior of the tide looks like. Um, you do get the, the rock and stuff does create uh, impressions, but for example, the middle tie here, you can see has some pretty heavy cracking and splitting. So uh, then what we do is, you know, we, we use AI to pull tie lo locations from the x-ray image. So we, we find each tie for, for grading. Uh, we format the ties for, for x-ray, I mean, for um, artificial intelligence analysis using CNNs. So we, we have to, you know, put them in the right um, dimensions for, for model inference and, and training. Um, and so on screen now is four different ties, just to see some different examples um, from different regions of track. And the first thing we do, when we do our AI, model, AI modeling, we, we segment our images into different zones. Um, we found that it's valuable for the customer to be able to assess different regions of the tie separately. So this is an example of how you could segment an image if you wanted to, uh, just into a left, right, center. Uh, so the, the image is still one, but the AI can treat it as three different zones or whatever number of zones we feel is necessary. And then we need to start to clean up our image for, for AI processing. So uh, the next thing we're going to do here is find our ad zones. So ads are where they uh, cut the plate cut, where they smooth the plate cut out of the tie. Uh, that develops over time and, and extends the life of the tie. Uh, that presents a challenge for x-ray because x-ray detects that as a hollow spot. And if you can imagine the top one inch of a tie being shaved off, then x-ray doesn't understand depth. It on, only understands that there's one inch of hollowness on that region, which, which can create grading flaws for us. So in this example, we've highlighted the regions of the tie that are ads, and we're going to pull those out of the grading. And of course, we've got to find obstructions. Anybody who's graded track knows that in the real world, there's all kinds of obstructions. Uh, so we, we use AI to find ballast, um, any materials on track that are going to occlude the x-ray image and should not be considered in the grading processing. So here we have the, the green boxes, or in this case, ballast that is littered across the ties. 
And then that turns into a final mask. Um, so the ballast and the ads put together have been blacked out here, and they're not going to be used for grading. So this is what the AI uh, inference system gets, and then we, we grade each zone. So, uh, for example, the top left image would be a failure on the left zone, and the middle and the right are, are bads. Um, and the bottom right tie is marginal in the left zone. There's a, a very small amount of checking there, but the, the middle and the, and the, the right zone look, look good. So, um, so once the AI gets done and spits out numeric values for each zone, then you know, we have a heavy modeling program, which we work on with our customers to map that into a grading system that works for them uniquely. And that is something we, we custom tailor to, to each railroad individually. Um, each railroad has their own way of doing things. And at the end of the day, they, they want some support there. So advances in x-ray technology, um, it's come a long way since, since we put our, our first x-ray machine out there in 2015 into revenue. Um, we have, uh, we've really dialed in the ability to move fast and increase resolution, which is something we're very excited about, opens a lot of doors. Um, the second row, the, the scanning speed of the system is still about a 10,000 hertz system, so it's still roughly the same scanning speed. However, the efficiency we're getting out of the system has has, tremend, has tremendously improved. Uh, you know, we're able to capture almost every X-ray photon bouncing back from the tie at this point, which means even though we have the same scanning speed, we're not needing near as many scan lines to do the job. So it, it's really allowing us to go much faster and um, and get a more resolved image. And the second to last row there, um, you know, our resolution has has really improved quite as well quite a bit. So um, what does this mean for us? So at University of Florida, which is where we do a lot of our uh, testing, you can see we got a, a video there on the left. That's our, our testing table starting to move at high speed. We got a, a mock-up x-ray system. And so we can we can run this test table and it uh, speeds up to 70 miles an hour and, 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 and test any, any speed needed. And on the right are just a, a couple captures of the target. So at, at the top right, we have the, this yellow uh, cutout view. That's the target buried within that scanning table. Uh, it's made of lead and, and wood. Um, and so we, we see that target as it sweeps through twice per revolution. And, um, and then we can do all kinds of measurements on the x-ray system, you know, MTF, uh, all kinds of things to assess how well we're performing. And the most important thing, this is a very early image here, uh, but you know, sharing it, the, what it demonstrates is at 50 miles an hour, we're still getting a very equivalent image to 20 miles an hour, which is really important for us to go high speed. Um, we're not losing significant resolution. Um, we're not losing significant signal to noise ratio. So we're, we're right there in terms of what we need to do for speed. And then, so now we're going to be optimizing, you know, the system against, uh, you know, to make the best image and, and to move this thing over to a track application. Um, we're also using these, uh, our new system to start to do computed tomography. So here's a, a small one foot section of, of tie cut out. And, um, and so what we're doing now is starting to look at, can we assess the ties before they're in track and get the initial state of that tie health before it goes in? That will help us with historical trending quite a bit. So we're making three-dimensional reconstructions of the tie, uh, computed tomography, also known as CT. And you string them together, they can play a lot like a movie. So on the left, you see the animation representing roughly where the, the height is on the right. So each 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 frame on the right is what we call a slice at, at a different depth in the tie itself. And so we're, we're flying through the center of this tie in, in three dimensions. So some of the things you'll see, we got the wane down here on the bottom left. You can see that in the image. So as we move down, that wane is going to go away as it closes up at this corner. Um, when it resets to the top, you can see this cracking pattern. Uh, and, and that does go away as it moves towards the inside of the tie. You can see this finger right here. That's going to be in this top right corner. As it gets about halfway down, you're going to see that it's a little finger of wood that splices off. And there it is right there, and it's coming back together, and that's the air gap under it. And then you can even see those little uh, kerf lines right here. 
uh, it just blipped by on the screen. I didn't need to pause it, but you can see the uh, the top of the tide bounce down for a moment, which is that that kerf line uh, cut into that tide. So so 3D reconstruction uh, can display it as a video. Um, we can you know of course we can data mine all. They're just two dimensional cross sections, so we can we can. We can analyze them as a two-dimensional cross-section. We can analyze them as a three-dimensional reconstruction. Um, so a lot of power here in the analysis. And um, you know the, the the new system that we're running has made quite a bit of difference. So in in terms of the quality of the CT image we're getting. So on the left here is a 5.5 by 5.5 uh, pressure-treated pine sample. Um, you can see a treatment pattern, a treatment stain here in the center. Um, and there's some knots um, as, as well. Uh, this middle image is a CT reconstruction with our with our most recent X-ray technology. Um, you can see the pattern stain, uh, the stain pattern very clearly. Um, you can see the rings. Uh, we can find the heartwood, which is right in here. Uh, the knots are not in this image, and that's because the CT was actually created a few inches beyond the the face of the wood. So those, those knots ended a few inches into the wood. And you can also, of course, see this large check uh, right here, this large white uh, check. So, so really a good image. And, and this is an upgrade over the image to the right, which was the previous x-ray system. So resolution uh, coming very strong, uh, allowing a lot more detailed analysis. Um, and that is, is the end. So... So that's really what we have in a nutshell. Um, you know, AI uh, being developed to, um, you know, advanced algorithms. We're, we're using it on our in-track applications. We're also using it on our CT applications. CT is a great application of, of AI uh, because of the 2D cross sections lend themselves to training and inferencing very naturally. Um, it, it's, it's really a good setup for, for AI processing. Um, and then, of course, the advances in the X-ray technology itself is allowing to do, us to do things that that we really weren't on the table in in 2015. So, you know, moving fast and, and getting better images than we than we're getting now, and um, and then the ability to do very good CT imaging and, and get the state of these ties as they're manufactured. So, a lot of interesting stuff on the horizon, uh, both in terms of hardware and processing. Uh, and and I guess with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to questions. Again, my name is Jeff Belcher. Um, uh, Tony will be the one you can contact for questions, but but I will uh, via email. But I will be here live, I suppose, after this recording to answer any that pop up. Uh, so thank you, and have a good day.